Peace, all. And thank you for watching another episode of the Clean Sweep Podcast. I am your host, I Just McIntosh, and the Clean Sweep Podcast is powered by JMD Janitorial. Before we proceed, let's just lay down a strong foundation. If you're a new cleaning business and you're on a shoestring budget, but you're looking to market your new cleaning business. It certainly isn't easy. So I'm going to outline about five strategies that you can implement, especially if you're a new cleaning business owner, commercial cleaning business owner, and you're working with a limited budget. So let's just lay down the foundation. Creating a strong business identity prior to launching your social media pages, as an example, is crucial when you're establishing brand recognition and you're looking to build trust with any potential customers. So think about it. If you're conducting a walkthrough, are you on time? You know, um, preferably, are you there early? Do you show up professional, at least with business cards, a shirt, something, a polo shirt, a hoodie that has your business name and logo? When you're in the walkthrough, do you immediately get there and start telling the potential customer what you can do for them? Just like they're interviewing you, you're interviewing them as well. So first you want to identify what are their problems? Why are they looking for a new cleaning company if they don't already have one there? So that's just one thing that you want to know off top, you know, and have your identity before you proceed to start like your social media pages. Now, if you're marketing your cleaning business, a new cleaning business, and you don't have mu much funds to start off with, then you're gonna always look to leverage social media. These platforms are free. You can utilize these platforms like Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. I always recommend that you create a professional LinkedIn business profile create a business YouTube profile that can showcase some of your capabilities. So for me, I often, when we're doing a cleaning job, I'll record what we're doing. So if we're doing the strip and wax. I'll record the entire process from the beginning to the end. And then I'll create, for example, YouTube shorts. So this will allow you to showcase your capabilities. And it doesn't cost you no money at all to record your team doing a carpet extraction, doing restroom deep cleaning, and then for you to edit the video, reduce it down to 10, 15 seconds. You can make it as long as you want and then to upload it onto these platforms. Now, post before and after cleaning photos. That's another one that works. I often do that on Facebook and on Instagram and on my Google business profile. Share cleaning tips. Add and engage your local community online. So there's local directories that you can use, like your local Yellow Pages. Everything is online now, but they still exist. Social media advertising can also be cost effective if you target your ads locally. Because that's going to be your first customer segment, especially when you're starting off your cleaning business. You're brand new to the landscape. You may have a little bit of experience, but you have a limited budget. Number three, Google my business listing. Now, there's a little caveat to that because through Google business, um, you know, it's going to come with a dot com. You can customize your email it comes with business suites. It's very inexpensive. But when you're dealing with a shoestring budget or a limited budget and you're new, I certainly recommend that you list your business with Google My Business. Now, to take it a step further, what I did was I contacted Manta and I use Manta, and I'm quite sure that there's other uh, companies that do the same thing. I use Manta, and Manta contacted 
uh, listing sites that all stream directly through Google. And what they did was they made sure that all of my information was consistent across the, the algorithm, let's call it. Because one thing you want to make sure is that all of your information is consistent so that you have your business spelled correctly. You have a business phone number. You uh, have a business address, even if it's like a UPS box. But all of these uh, can go haywire and can have, for example, you know, your personal phone number mixed up, your name mixed up. Uh, your business name spelled incorrectly. So you just want to scrub the internet. Um, and I chose to use Manta. And um, they made sure that all of my I's were dotted, all of my T's were crossed, all of my uh, information was consistent. And um, that does help in the long run when Google is looking to get the end user the quickest result. Because if they're looking for co commercial cleaning businesses near me, as soon as someone types that in, the Google algorithm is going to search. Yeah, it may have certain landing pages um, based off of reviews or whatever that may rank higher to you on the first page. But if you're a new cleaning business, that's to be expected. I mean, you're just starting off. You can't expect that you're going to rank on the first page of Google for commercial cleaning businesses near me. That's uh, not going to happen. But what could happen is that you can make sure that all of your information is consistent. All of your information is lined up accordingly. And um, that particular platform, Manta, can help you do that. There is a nominal fee that you have to pay. But, you know, it is the cost of doing business is relatively cheap. Quite sure that you can probably find a cheaper way to do it. Possibly you can do it yourself. Um, but that deals with SEO searches in the whole nine yards, which is outside of what we're speaking about today. So, again, if you're a new cleaning business, you're dealing with a limited budget. You want to use Google My Business listing. You set up your Google Suite. You update your information. You post pictures in their daily. You post uh, regular posts in their daily. This all helps build towards, you know, ranking you higher when that end user types in cleaning businesses near me, commercial cleaning businesses near me. They're looking to get that end user the quickest result, and that will certainly help you. Networking and partnerships. You want to network with local businesses and property managers if you're a new cleaning business. Um, a lot of times you may have to go around with flyers, your business cards, um, but that's where it's all going to begin, where the boots hit the ground, where the rubber meets the road, especially when you're a new cleaning business and you're dealing with a limited budget and you don't have the funds to uh, spend on a large marketing campaign in order to get your name out there. So you're going to network with local businesses, uh, dropping off business cards, asking for referrals, letting them know, hey, listen, you know, I'll do a deep clean, you know, and then you can tell other businesses about me. And the next time I do a deep clean with you, we'll give you a reduced rate. Um, property managers who might require your cleaning services or re can refer you to others. Consider bartering. Now, again, that's kind of a last option, but if you're 100% in with the commercial cleaning business, you're brand new, you don't have no funds, your back is against the wall, you got bills and family to take care of, then at that point, you got to kind of do what you need to do. You don't want to come across desperate. That's not what I'm saying. But the point is, is that if I'm dealing, I don't know, at a shopping center um, a strip mall, and there's multiple businesses there, and the landlord has a business. Um, he owns all of the strip mall, and he says, "Well, listen, you know, if you clean my where my offices are, and I'll recommend you to all of my tenants." Um, that's bartering, and that can help you in your business. So you might want to consider bartering services with businesses that can cater to your customer segment. I thought that was important and something that you need to know. Partnerships like subcontracting. So, for example, JMD Janitorial, you know, we often would do subcontracts. So I would subcontract on a, 
partnership um, like with a community college or on a management level where I'm not looking to pr provide the cleaners, but I'm looking to provide the management services and can manage a project on a very large scale, get the proper reports done, um, the whole nine yards, everything that upper management would do on that particular project. So networking and partnerships, especially if you're a new to the commercial cleaning industry and you don't have much funds to start off with um, for marketing in order for you to get your name out there and you're working with a shoe string budget. If you haven't done so already, now will be a good time to hit that subscribe button to like, share, even post a comment. So we're going to proceed to the fifth, the last antidote, the last example for new cleaning business owners, commercial cleaning business owners, and you're looking to market your new cleaning business, but you're dealing with a shoestring budget. You don't have funds. You're not out there by yourself. I started off like this. When I started off in the commercial cleaning space, um, you know, 10 years ago, I didn't have a huge budget when it came to marketing. So I had to go around with flyers, distribute flyers in neighborhoods where there are local businesses um, with their permission, of course, and consider affordable local advertising options like community bulletin boards or local newspapers, local magazines, um, doctor offices, drop off your business cards, you know, um, and again, just word of mouth. That is one of the cheapest ways um, to market your commercial cleaning business, especially when you're dealing with a limited budget. So we're going to go to a bonus strategy. And again, this is um, just a reiteration, but it's very important, especially when you're dealing with a new cleaning business. You're just starting off. You don't have much funds to put your name out there because it's going to take time. Even with all of these strategies that I'm giving it to you, it's just a poor man's way of going about it. The beginner's way of going about it, especially when you're dealing with a new cleaning business and you're again, on a shoestring budget. Attend community events. Participate or sponsor local community events. Your local basketball teams, your summer league teams, your winter basketball teams, um, with your YMCA, go sponsor a team. Put your name out there. It doesn't cost much um, to sponsor a little league baseball team. As another example, um, they often have the billboards and you get to, you know, put up a, a part of your sponsorship during the whole Little League baseball season. Um, you have your name, your business name, your phone number, all of your contact information, and, and that's free promotion for those who are going to watch the games, folks who are driving by. But it's certainly a great way to get your business name out there and for you to meet potential customers. because. Regardless of the strategies that I'm providing you, and you may implement them very well, that's just part of the battle. You know, that gets you to the customer. But what, what are you going to do once you get to the customer? Just because you get to the customer doesn't mean that it's going to be a deal, like you're going to, you know, get that particular contract or you're going to get that account. So and use social media to your advantage because these platforms are free. It doesn't cost you anything other than your regular phone bill to when you go clean to capture that content, edit it down, and then upload it as uh, you know a video and show your capabilities. But consistency is the key when you are marketing on a budget. It may take some time to see results, but persistently applying these strategies can help you grow your cleaning business on a budget. Marketing a new cleaning business on a limited budget is not only feasible, but it can also be highly effective with the right strategies. Embracing digital marketing, leveraging the power of word of mouth through referral programs and engage directly with your local community. The key is to be creative, persistent, and always focus on providing exceptional value 
what value are you going to bring to these particular new customers that people haven't already bought value to do? What are your differentiators? What is going to separate you from a crowded field of other commercial cleaning business owners who have been out there for a while? It's really not a competition because there's so many businesses out there who are looking for quality service. So I'm always going to tell you, don't look for, you know, if this is a get rich overnight thing, build up per consistency, build up quality, and your reputation will precede you. But the key is to be creative, persistent, and always focused on providing exceptional value and service to your customer segment. Thank you for watching another episode of the Clean Sweet Podcast, powered by JMD Janitorial. I am your host, I Just McIntosh. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and post a comment. Thank you for your support and watching our channel on YouTube, JMD Janitorial. Peace all and be victorious. I stay on point, baby. Huh? One, one, two.